begin to make a call to the lord how you should practice the eight fold steps of the yoga there is a word which is the name of the lord which is called the call of the lord you can make a call of that how sit down in a calm place select the same place every day and the same time every day and make yourself physically and mentally clean and sit down in a convenient posture and close your eyes and see that every muscle and every nerve in your body are relaxed and then begin to regulate your respiration once again establish the rhythm and the music in your respiration which was there once in your childhood and which you lost when you are grown up how is it you lost it whenever you are in a hurry to catch a train you your respiration was disturbed whenever you are agitated that your office time is it, it is time for office then you have rapid respiration whenever you are angry your respiration is disturbed whenever you are jealous it is disturbed whenever you are suddenly afraid of something it is disturbed at least a thousand times in the day you have allowed it to disturb and through these years of 30 or 40 of your age you have disturbed the respiration many thousands of times and the disturbance has formed a habit and it established in your respiration now once again you have to establish the original rhythm and music begin to inhale slowly uniformly and prolonged in a prolonged way with a uniform speed with a calm mind as long as you can inhale then begin to exhale in the same way take in breath in a uniform and soft way and breathe out in a uniform and a soft way and while breathing out you think of your respiration and its movements within a very short time you will come to understand that you are not breathing that the breathing is done for you because the respiration is automatic and you never propose to make the first respiration when you were born something made you breathe when you were born for the first time even now it is making you breathe and you are not breathing you will understand this for the first time it is the lord who is breathing for you and it is not the mind who is, which is breathing because even while you are in sleep you are breathing therefore it is the lord consciousness that is breathing for you to make you live now you will come to understand the presence of the lord consciousness for the first time then make a call of the lord there is one word to call the lord patanjali says that word is om while breathing out you make a sound of om in a slow soft uniform way and a prolonged and a prolonged way and while uttering the sound om with your voice you begin to listen to your own voice without that it is useless as long as you are listening to your own voice of om it is a mantra then you will understand that it is the call of the lord for some time you will understand that you are calling the lord who is within but after some time you will understand that 
it is the call made by the lord from within he is breathing for you he is making you respire he is suggesting from within that you are to speak or stop he is suggesting from within that you are to make your voice expressed now you will understand that it is his call not your call that is why patanjali says it is the call of the lord om is the call of the lord he is calling from within always but all these days you are busy with the negative i am and you had no time to listen to his call now when once you begin to make an utterance of om every day at the same time and in the same place according to the given instructions you will listen to the call of the lord and mentally you will approach the lord and gradually your light is absorbed by the light of the lord within you so that you live with the lord as his light this is the introductory chapter which patanjali gives us while doing this practice daily while proposing every moment that you should be with the lord while growing passive to every curiosity towards the outward uh, outward incidents you have to observe certain instructions and you should have a disciplined way of life that discipline has eight steps and patanjali gives us the eight steps to follow the first is you should begin to live with an attitude of harmlessness you, your attitude should be in such a way that you should not cause any harm to any living being on this earth then the second is what he calls truthfulness truthfulness is not only speaking truth it is your attitude towards yourself and others whatever you do you should do it willfully and willingly and whatever you are not convinced to do you should not do and whatever you are convinced that it is not correct you should stop doing it if anyone talks to you answer truthfully if you help anyone help with your heart not you with your mind and speak with your heart not with your mind and let your life be a life of heart and not a life of intelligence so you should have a purposive way of living only the only purpose being the higher life and living with the lord the third is conquer if there are any thieving instincts in you if there is something very nice and valuable there with our yoga muni uh, uh, if i take it away when he is not there it is called stealing or thieving instinct uh, on the physical plane but there is stealing in the mental plane also if i mentally feel that watch is very good it would be better if i have it but for reasons of decency i do not beg him that watch that is what is called thieving in the mental sense and also there is thieving in the intellectual and cultural sense if my friend speaks wonderful sentences in a lecture if i note down those sentences and go to india use those sentences in my lectures so that the people say very good very good i pause that as if i spoke those sentences or if i use those sentences in one of my book 
in such a wonderful way that my friend cannot detect it. That is called stealing in the cultural and intellectual plane. All these instincts should be eliminated. It becomes easy for us when we begin to utter Om daily because the Lord removes the obstacles on our path. How? Always obstacles exist only in our mind, not, not outside. What are there outside is people and some articles and no obstacles. Obstacles exist in my impressions about people and my mind. And when those things are removed, there are no obstacles. That means obstacle consciousness is removed. Obstacle mindedness is removed. Same thing, same thing, same, same thing. Yes, that is, that is the only obstacle we have in this world. What we see outside as obstacles are only our imagination. So, the Lord removes the obstacles on our way and then practice an attitude of tolerance. Tolerance. If you find defects in others' behavior, don't take particular care of them unless he wants you to suggest and rectify. And if there is something good and virtuous in others' behavior, make a hearty admiration of it. Admiration, yes. And also make an vocal appreciation without any complex. And make a hearty attempt to copy it. Take delight in narrating the good incidents of others many times. If you want to point out any faults in others, don't do it in his absence with others. Do not comment anyone in his absence. And in the absence of others, you call him and tell him what you feel wrong. This is what he calls the first step. The first step includes all these items. Then the second step, practice austerity. That is a pure way of living and regularize the items of your routine and keep the body and mind clean and pure and daily make it a point to read from one of the scriptures. It is the only way to go to approach the Lord into yourself. Let it be one sentence or one paragraph and read and think about the meaning and import of a scripture. And then daily utter Om and listen to it according to the instructions. This, these things form the second uh, item. Then you practice to establish stability of mind by observing your own respiration, every moment of your own respiration. Then the mind gradually begins to withdraw to your heart. The mind exists in the brain cells normally, whereas the Lord Consciousness exists in the heart center. By daily thinking and observing your own respiration, you are bringing your mind to the Lord center, the heart center. Gradually, day by day, the mind approaches the Lord. That, that is, the negative I am begins to approach the positive I am. And finally, he comes and joins the Lord in the heart. The activity of respiration is called pulsation or prana. 
mind and prana will become one. Remember that your prana is not maintained by your mind or intelligence. It is maintained by the Lord Consciousness who is in your heart. When the mind merges in the respiration activity, mind and prana become one unit. And then the Lord Consciousness is experienced by you. The mind begins to stand stable and you will have the ease of your own existence. There is no affliction of the body, no suffering from the nerves, no suffering from the thoughts and ideas, no suffering from the busy program of the day, even though the program is being conducted. All these days, you are doing things but now things are being done. That is the change that takes place. Physically, you will maintain the same speed with your program, but mentally you will sit very calm at your heart. No fear of hypertension or hypotension. No fear of nervousness or oversensitivity. No fear of obsessions or psychosomatic phenomena. No fear of insomnia or hypertension. You will be with your Lord. Mind will be with you. Senses will be with the mind. And body will be with the senses. The needs of the body are being looked after. This is the change that occurs at first. This is the third step. And then there comes a time when your respiration becomes completely musical and rhythmic. When your merges, when your mind merges in your prana, your pulsations will become regular. The Lord Consciousness which is making these pulsations of respiration will shower its grace upon the respiration. And when the mind is totally merged like this, when you experience perfect ease and stability, then automatically your respiration stops. That does not mean there is any danger. You will be living more comfortably than previously. You will be more conscious than you are previously. And your consciousness is simultaneously working in all planes better than previously. This is what is called pranayama. In the pranayama of Patanjali, the respiration stops. You are not expected to stop respiration in the, in the name of Kumbhaka. It may be correct. And uh, some schools of yoga may prescribe it. And as far as Patanjali is concerned, we are not expected to make any kumbhaka. That is, forcing the respiration for some time. We are expected only to regulate the respiration and automatically the respiration stops. You will be happiness and ease inside. Until you call the mind outside once again, the mind will not come out into the environment. The moment you call the mind once again out, respiration automatically begins. This is what happens in the pranayama of Patanjali. And then you can call the mind from the senses any time you like, simply by following the process of these three steps. That is, the process of making the respiration uniform, soft and slow, observing your respiration as long you are respiring, and uttering Om and listening to it. By doing this within a few seconds, 
you will be able to call the mind into the heart any time you want this is the fourth step called pratyahara or the absorption of the activity of the senses into the mind and the activity of the mind into the lord after some time you are expected once again to turn to the outer world now you apply this state of existence to something you prescribe previously the mind was wandering in something which you did not prescribe that is the environment but now the mind stands with you as your faithful servant and you are expected to prescribe something to the mind for the next step of practice for example you can take a sentence from any scripture for example the gospel the sermon on the mount or the voice of the silence or the bhagavad gita or a mantram in rigveda or the gayatri mantram take any sentence from any scripture you 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 like apply this state of mind to that sentence the mind stands with that sentence without moving hither and thither and you will receive the light of that sentence you will receive the lord who is existing in that sentence and afterwards you can apply it to any picture of the lord for example the picture of lord krishna or lord buddha or lord jesus doing something good to the world the picture stands as long as you want and it reveals the secrets of the lord as long as it is with you it begins to shed its light upon you this is called what is called dharana contemplation then the next step when you apply your mind to a picture or a sentence you will be able to enjoy the lord and nothing else at all and even though you apply it to a piece of chalk it will be no more a piece of chalk to you in your contemplation within a few seconds yes with the piece of chalk becomes molecules a group of molecules molecules become atoms atoms become the isotopes isotopes become the vibrations vibrations become the content of the space that is the lord who is existing everywhere you can meditate you can contemplate upon the board everything that is made up of atoms is understood as the lord manifesting himself in the form of atoms that is the next state you will get and then after some time the object of your meditation will exist and you will not exist that is the next step that takes place of course you would have experienced many times in your life previously also but you did not know that the state is so very valuable when you had been to a musical opera and when the music is quite to your satisfaction and taste and when if the musician is doing spl- uh, splendidly this change has occurred in you at first when you entered the opera and began to listen to the music you have three items with you the one who is observing or listening to music 
the second one the musician who is singing and the third is the process whatever we do we have these three items if we are listening to something we have the person who is speaking we have the listener ourselves and the process and the process of listening when you are eating something you are there as the person eating and the food is there to be eaten and the process of eating is there these three eight, eight, items exist inevitably as long as you are existing with the negative i am but in the eight fold process of patanjali yoga when you are meditating upon the piece of chalk you will lose your own existence just as in the opera during the first two or three minutes you are seeing the musician and sometimes his face also and if he makes some gestures you are laughing also sometimes but after a few minutes he is not there music is there even though your eyes are open his face is not seen because you are listening to music and the person is not there to you such a change occurs in you also and after the next few minutes you will not remember that you are listening to music only music exists you do not exist so two items are melted and only one item exists similarly when you began to read this sentence in the scripture you remember yourself as the one reading and the scripture that is being read and the process or effort of your reading but when you approach through this process the idea of your reading is already gone only two things exist yourself and the lord in the form of the sentence of the scripture and in the next step you are not exist going to exist only the object of meditation is existing that is if you meditate upon the sentence i am the way then you will not be there the lord and his way will be there in the name of i am because you are also the same i am who is meditating illumined by the i am of the lord <coughs> already at the feet of the lord so the object of meditation exists and you will stop to exist that is the next step seventh step called meditation dhyana that is meditation when the object of meditation exists when the effort of meditation does not exist when the person who is meditating does not exist then it is meditation it is possible very easily by following the patanjali's process that is uttering om and listening to it and in the next step next change occurs when you are applying meditation upon this piece of chalk only the object of meditation exists you do not exist as the observer but the observ- observation does not exist the effort of observation does not exist but the piece of chalk exists and its name goes away from your mind the name piece of chalk will go away but the object exists the shape of the chalk will go away from your mind the object exists 
the white color of the chalk will go away from your mind the object exists everything disappears from your mind except existence what exists is only the lord even if you apply your meditation to the piece of chalk it is only the lord who is existing even if you apply to the blackboard the name of board will drop off but the object exists the green color will disappear the object exists the shape will disappear the object exists then the object is only an illumination the the rest of the things are illusion of the eye so the Ill the illusion disappears and the existence exists that is what is called attainment the eighth state it is called samadhi and don't think these stages occur to you one after another don't think that after some time meditation occurs to you and after some time attainment occurs to you when you once submit yourself to the discipline prescribed by